Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Star Wars, the Rise of the Resistance, Rise of the Resistance attraction in Galaxy's Edges. Edges. Edges, plural. They're um, edges -y. Yeah, there are problems on both coasts. Now, for people who are not familiar with Disney theme parks, because I think sometimes we forget that a lot of people who listen to the channels have never even been to a Disney theme park at all. Uh, there are actually two Galaxy's Edges. There's one in Florida, which mm -hmm. is Walt Disney World, and then there's one in Disneyland. Which is in Anaheim, California. Anaheim, California. Disneyland's the original. Uh, they just opened their Rise of the Resistance this week. Yeah. And Rise of the Resistance opened in Florida a couple of months ago. Yeah, December last month, 5th. December. But they're having problems on both coasts with this ride. Yes, and it's been open for almost going on two months in Florida, and they're still having issues. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that, because this is the ride that is supposedly going to make or break, no pun intended, mm -hmm. uh, the success of Galaxy's Edge on both coasts, and whether or not, you know, it's going to determine whether or not the billions that Disney spent on Galaxy's Edge uh, was actually worth it. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. So before we get into the video, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. We're at uh, 90 some thousand subs. Yeah. Hoping for 100,000 soon. Thank you guys for the support. It's appreciated. And uh, yeah, we're going to be checking Galaxy's Edge out here pretty yes, soon. We will be. We're going to see what happens. Disney World. We will be. Yeah, we're going to be checking if it out. works. If it works. That's the question. We don't know. So I just wanted to bring this up first before we get into it. Market Insider talking about how supremely important. Uh, Rise of the Resistance is because Disneyland in California last year had a massive attendance decline mm -hmm. when Galaxy's Edge opened, and uh, it's because they did they only had the one attraction. Right, I think right. people were waiting. I mean, why go when you're only gonna go one time, uh, and you know, in a year or in a couple years, why are you gonna go when it's not all open? You're gonna wait till everything's open to go. Yeah, I mean that just that just makes sense. And Disneyland in California is more of a locals park, so they had blackout dates on the annual passes. They did, so people couldn't come. And people were staying away because they knew the crowds were going to be nuts. Well, they, they thought. thought. <laughs> it had the opposite problem. Actually, last summer would have been the ideal time to go check out Disneyland. You could walk on the Pirates of the Caribbean because mm -hmm. uh, the park was considered a flop. It was empty. It was Which, crazy. Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean is actually the uh, you know the better version. Oh, it's way better. I mean, I'm just going to say it flat it's out. It's way better. It, the Disneyland yeah. version is superior. Anyway. Anyway, um, but now that Rise of the Resistance has opened, it's created massive, massive problems in Disneyland. Everybody was oh, waiting Disney for Oh, Disney World, this. too. Uh, both. So we're going to talk about both coasts. We're going to try to clarify which is which because people are like, you know, Disneyland, Disney World, what's the difference? There's a difference. There's a difference. Um, but yeah, so we followed this and, you know, I want to be clear. Uh, every ride has downtime because we, we get a lot of crap from people uh, saying that, you know, you're not being fair. Every ride has We've downtime. We've said that every time we do one of these videos. They don't but listen we'll to the We'll say it videos. again for those who don't listen to the videos. <laughs> they don't listen to the I'll videos. This anyway, every ride does have downtime. The problem is it's not usually this early into the attraction being open, and it's not as often as we're getting with this one. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, you know, to backpedal even a little bit more, you know, uh, people were coming to us and coming, apparently coming to other like Disney media, fan media outlets from Disney, from mm -hmm. within Disney saying this ride is not ready. Right. It's not ready to go live. And the There's, powers that be aren't listening. And they're not listening. So it was almost like, you know what? We told them, we told them yep. not, we weren't ready. We needed a couple months yet. And this is what happens. This is well, what they happens. gave Disneyland extra time and they still weren't ready. They're still not but that's ready. That's because the track was upside down. But that's all our story entirely. Right. So let's go to the East Coast version first. This is the version that's been open since December. Okay, um, well, before we do that even, well, yeah, we will. But here's the thing that's going on with, with the Rise of the Resistance. Because everybody wants to ride it. Because it's so groundbreaking and amazing, which it is. It truly is. That's not the problem. Um, it's What it's causing a problem for is that there are so many people that want to ride it that cannot get everybody on. So what they have initiated at Disney World and Disneyland is the virtual boarding groups. Yeah. So what you do is it used to be like whoever got their first got in the boarding groups first and so on. But no, no, people were complaining that you mean I didn't I showed up at everybody else showed up at six and I didn't show up till seven, so I should get on there too. So what they decided to do is make it a lottery. So if everybody, if you want to ride the traction, you have to be in the park you're at, that Disneyland Park or, or Disney's Hollywood Studios, when the attraction opens. I mean, and we're talking in the gates, in the park, inside. You and your entire party, everyone who's riding with you must be present. And then when the park opens, the boarding group 
the um, app opens mm. and then you can get a boarding group uh, for your party. The problem is there are thousands of people waiting and there aren't as many boarding groups as to go around. Now Disney World is actually balancing out. Boarding groups don't go completely away for like 10 minutes and then the, the standby lines uh, groups can go up to like an hour and a half yeah. after you can still get on a standby. Doesn't mean you get to ride, but you get a chance to ride. Disneyland, because it's newer, um, it went, it goes full between 45 seconds and a minute or two. Yeah, um, they had an article out on Sci-Fi Wire, and yeah, we'll, we'll get back to the breakdowns first, but just talk about how hard it is to even get on this ride uh, to begin with. So like here, um, Disneyland opens at 8, and by 8.03, uh, all the boarding passes were gone. Uh, like I said, Disney World, you have a 10-minute window, and Disney World, they've also added two hours extra um, in the evenings to try to get more people on to the attraction. But the problem goes further than the boarding passes. Then you have the fact that the attraction doesn't stay up and it keeps going down because it keeps breaking. Yeah. That's where we're running into problems too. Yeah, we'll talk We'll talk about that and then we'll go back to um, kind of the backlash, even the Disney Disney fan blogs are yeah. given. Just the whole system, the whole way around. Yeah. Um, but now this is in, this is in Florida. Uh, it broke down for seven hours. Yeah, it wasn't open. This has happened before where they didn't open, but it's usually about an hour and a half to two hours. Like a park opens at seven in Walt Disney World and they usually add up like nine, a couple instances of 945, things like that. This one went yesterday, I think it was yesterday, seven hours to the first, first boarding group got on. Now understand, every time it goes down and or it's delayed, uh, the boarding groups have the higher numbers and it's a lottery system. You could be there first and still get a high number over somebody who came in 10 minutes yeah. you know, later. Um, the, the higher number groups are getting pushed out. So like if it doesn't open to seven hours late, they're not gonna be able to get all the groups through. And if you have a high number, you probably won't get to ride that day. Yeah, and that's, I mean, think about it. If you're playing a trip to go to Disney World, especially, which is not a locals park, and most people are flying into Disney World, right? Uh, you're flying into Disney World, you're dropping five or six thousand dollars on a vacation because you want to check out Galaxy's Edge, and the, and what if you only have one shot yeah. at riding this ride and you don't get to ride it, and that's the whole purpose for going down there. Well, I just wrote an article today that I, one, if you're going to go, I would wait, but two, I highly recommend uh, park hoppers. Uh, for either Disneyland or Disney World, because what's happening is people are going all, all in there to try to get a boarding pass. If you don't get a boarding pass or you get a really late boarding pass, you're stuck there all day. At Disney. Yeah. And now Disneyland's not so bad because there's a lot to do at Disneyland. Yeah. But Disney Hollywood Studios, there really isn't a lot to do. There are some things, but it's, you know, it would, you could do it like in a half day or something. It's other than Galaxy's Edge. It's, it's not a lot of stuff. But the lines are so long now because everybody's stuck there. Yeah. And if you didn't get a boarding pass at all, you're still stuck there and you used your one shot on that day. If you have a, a hopper pass, you can try every day of your trip. And then if you don't get it, you leave, you know, go someplace else, no problem. So I recommend the hoppers. Yeah, but not everybody has that because they were actually pushing a ticket package. It had like right. a four day, four park. So yeah, I'll but weren't those afternoon? I don't remember. Because they know they had the tickets that were lower cost tickets, but you had to go afternoon. Well, you're screwed. If you're not there first thing in the morning, you're not getting on. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. Well, yeah, people are showing up at like five, six o'clock in the morning now. And that's that's kind of the way that, uh, you know, Flight of Passage was Pandora. I and mean, we told people even a year after it opened, like if you want to get on it, you're going to have to, even before the buses run, you're going to have to go take a lift or something and go to Animal Kingdom and get there early. Yeah. Uh, or or very, right very late. If you go like yeah. the last half an hour, they have to, they, they can't close the queue down until the park closes. So if you went in at the end of the day, you could get in the queue and after the fast passes are through and the line moves very quickly. Um, but there's no fast passes for, uh, the, for this. No, you have to get this boarding pass. So, I, I mean, look, we get, we completely get, because the people who are complaining don't even watch our videos, so they obviously don't know what we're saying. But we get that rides break down. This ride is incredibly complicated. It, it breaks down. It breaks down far more often than it should. Is the problem? It's one of those things where it's almost like you know, it's one of those cases where just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should do something. They were trying so hard to make the most advanced theme park ride ever that they they made it but now there's so many moving parts that can break and so many things that can go wrong uh i gotta wonder in the back of my head are they going to pair back on this at some point I don't know. are they gonna they better fix it because it's causing a lot of issues and you know it, it, like you said that's i was thinking the same thing you said it's like just because you could and and what happens is they keep outdoing themselves every time so people expect more and more and more and um there's a lot of more technology, a lot more moving parts when you have to go bigger and better. And, but then there's so many things that could go wrong. 
and people were saying oh it's because it was cold because right now in florida it's really really cold so like oh it's, it's a down it was down for two, a couple hours because seven hours because it was cold what and people, that's people said that's and stupid then people today were like uh it's colder today than it was yesterday and it's running this morning I'm just, it's I'm been just... in Florida. It broke down on opening day. There were people that were trying to do ride through videos, actually fan press trying to do ride through videos and they got evacuated. The real press got, it broke down on them too, but then you weren't hearing about you it. You didn't hear about it. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about that. They actually had all kinds of problems with it during the media preview and nobody was talking about it because it would make Disney look bad. We would have, but we would have gotten our media taken away. <laughs> so. well, no, that's exactly it. People are afraid to say, you know, if, if they're on the media list, they're afraid to say bad things. And it's not a bad thing. It's just like the ride breaks it's the down. the truth. Uh, we're talking, you know, a couple months in, we're in our second month now. Will they get the problems worked out? Yeah, but it's also like they might, I'm actually thinking the problems might increase as the ride system gets wear and tear. I don't know. I know Hagrid's, when they opened Hagrid's Coaster at uh, Universal Orlando, uh, it had a lot of, of problems for the first few months as well. Yeah. Now, it's they've got it all smoothed out now that it seems to mostly be, you know, okay. Uh, but it took a few months. So I'm, I'm hoping that it goes the way of that and they get it worked out and after everything's broken in and they and, they, and everybody understands the systems, all the cast members understand everything, um, that it'll, it'll smooth itself out and it'll work better is my hope. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll give them that, but... Uh... You know, this, this all goes back to, you know, what we we're talking about before. Disney wanted to get revenue on the books, so they opened the ride before the ride was, frankly, ready to be yeah. opened. And it's the same with a hotel, like the Riviera a Hotel. The beds were falling off the walls. Now, I think it's okay now, but for when the first couple of weeks, and, you know, I understand you don't know how everything's going to go until you open it. And I understand things are going to break when you open things that are new because you don't know how it's all going to work together. But the thing is, shouldn't they have already tested the stuff to make sure they knew how it all worked together? Especially, I mean, for the hotel, I can give it more of a pass than I could on an attraction that they've been, you know, shilling for months. I think that's it. I think when, when Disney, like, builds it up and builds it up and builds it up, and then they're like, okay, you know, eh, I don't know how it's going to go. So I got to wonder, you know, are the get, I mean, look, the Sacramento Bee is making fun of it breaking down opening day. This happened in Florida too. So oh, yeah. opening day, both coasts, the ride broke down. Florida, it's breaking down for hours. It's like every day it's down. It's down all the time. And and, and you don't hear about it because everybody's just like, like, you know, oh, typical, you know, it's like, it's down again. Now, mostly if it's just like a little bit, a short downtime, it's, you're, you're still going to get a chance to ride if you have a, a boarding pass, but it's when it's down for long periods of time, like seven hours, that it's an issue. Yeah, so now we're starting to get some pushback on the whole enchilada. Well, this is true what they said. Yeah, the whole enchilada from um, some theme park websites, including Theme Park Insider, which including has been around us. for a while, <laughs> including <laughs> us. And uh, Robert Niles, he writes for other, I think he writes for other publications too about theme parks. And he's even like, this is really kind of hit or miss whether or not you're even going to get to ride the damn thing. And it's a lottery. It's not even yeah. a virtual queue. It's not a... It's a lottery system. It is now. It started out like as Hamilton. A, it started out as a real virtual queue where if you got there earlier, you got your boarding passes earlier. Um, you got them in order. Now it's everybody. It doesn't matter if you show up at 5 a.m. or if you show up at 6:30 a.m. As long as you're inside the gates and you scan. I already scanned your Magic Band or your ticket and you're in. Um, you're allowed to to go for the boarding passes and it doesn't matter how, who, who waited longer. It just doesn't matter. Yeah. So here's what happened. Yeah. That's exactly it. Said so in practice, this isn't even a virtual queue. If all the days boarding spots are gone that quickly, uh, what Disneyland has for Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is really a lottery. Mm -hmm. Disneyland is using the same system as Hollywood Studios and Disney World. Florida adopted soon after Rise of the Resistance opened. Initially, Hollywood Studios was using... Yep, they were originally. Yep, a more, I knew that. Yep, a more traditional queue, which uh, guests were allowed to join as soon as they entered the park. But that was leading to people crowding the park's entry plaza in the middle of the night yep. as they tried to get first dibs to enter the park. Um, so they were forming a physical queue to enter the virtual one. Disney didn't want the hassle of maintaining that physical queue or take complaints from guests who didn't have, <laughs> we have to get up at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, you so, know, well, even then, what's the difference does it make? Cause if you don't, if you're not there at 7am, you're not going to get to ride it anyway. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so at least in Hollywood studios, at least in Hollywood Studios, everyone inside the park at opening has been getting boarding group numbers to allow them to ride the ride. Now, we're hearing Disneyland. Wasn't some guy had to come back the next day or something? Oh, no. Disneyland? No. This, what happened Disney World was when it broke down the first couple of days, they were getting people passes to come back the next day. Because what was happening is, like again, where I recommend the park hoppers, a lot of people, because it's cheaper, have the one day, one park tickets uh, at both parks, uh, both you know Disneyland and Disney World. And what's happening is you use your one day, one park ticket to go in to ride Rise of Resistance. And if you don't get a boarding pass, or if you do and it breaks, um, what are you going to do? You're stuck there all day. Yeah. You, you use your ticket. 
Yeah, well, they're saying, yeah, Disneyland, the best estimates at this point are that the vast majority of people inside the park are getting boarding groups. It's clear that some Disneyland guests who have made the commitment to be in the park on opening day are not getting an assignment, or at opening are not getting an assignment. No, they're not. There's a lot that aren't getting Yeah, it. and some who do get boarding group assignments are getting a backup group assignments, all middle are not called, even before the ride closes. Right, those are the those are the, uh, the standby lines. Um, yeah, usually what happens is the, the official boarding passes are gone within a few minutes. Uh, Disneyland, it's like under three minutes. And then they have a, a backup standby, yeah. and those like, last about an hour, hour and a half at Walt Disney World. It doesn't last more than like a half an hour at Disneyland if that I don't think it's even that long and then if there's room they'll call you yeah so this is I mean people were complaining about it obviously you know when you make a trip now Disneyland I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say I don't think people are out as much at Disneyland as they are at Disney World because for the most part I would say a lot of the people showing up at Disneyland are probably locals or probably yeah, in driving distance. Disney World, I think you're going to have people flying in. Thousands of dollars thinking you're going to get to ride this, and yeah. you might not. Now, the odds are better for you at Disney World right, yeah, now, right now than Disneyland. Um, as long as you're there when the when the park opens and you're inside the gates at the time it opens and you're already standing there, you sh you, you have a better chance of getting it because, like I said, it's taken 10 minutes for it to be completely gone. So you do have a good shot, but you have to be there early. Just know this. Yeah, so this is coming from Theme Park Insider. Again, they've been around for a while. Robert Niles writes for other uh, newspapers, magazines. Mm -hmm. He knows his stuff. He's saying there's a small but in uh, significant chance that you will not even get the ride. That's, that's yep. Yeah, that's why that's at this point, this yep, we can't recommend booking a trip to Disneyland solely to go on Rise of the Resistance. I agree. If you must get on the ride ASAP, choose a trip to Disney World instead. Where getting it, uh, you know, Hollywood Studios first thing in the morning does appear to guarantee it you a spot. It still doesn't guarantee you because here's yeah. what's happening. Uh, you get a spot and then the ride breaks down or the ride doesn't open for seven hours later. And if you're, and it doesn't matter, like I said, it's a lottery system. So two people standing side by side going on to the boarding pass uh, app at the same time. They don't, it's not like the, the, the first one on there might get like a lower group. It's like somebody's getting like a group 12 and somebody's getting group like a hundred. It's it just, it's, I don't know if it's randomly generated it or says what. Ra they think it's so, random, yeah. um, you might sit there at the same time as somebody else and get like a later group and you might not get to ride it at all because the ride goes down for seven hours so yeah it's it's a complete mess yeah um, so to to bring it back to you know the point here like rise of the resistance is supposed to fix galaxy's edge and it's actually causing more problems but a different kind of different kinds of problems i don't understand how how many people are there getting through on this thing it doesn't seem like they can get many people through on it if that if in the morning the crowd that's there even if everyone there got a boarding pass, that is nowhere near the number of people that pass to the park during a day. No. I'm just like, it must not have a very, I don't know what the capacity is, but it must not have a very high capacity um, in compar comparison to like the Millennium Falcon or different things like that, because it, even Pandora, uh, Flight of Passage, because uh, people wait in line for hours, but they still get on it. Yeah. Here, there's no line. But, you know, you could, it could take 10 hours to get a turn. Yeah, you know? the, fa so, the Falcon can handle people. I know, I'm just like, I, I and we thought that was going to be the one that was going to have issues with capacity. Yeah, that was so, what they were worried about. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying you should go, but, you know, you're, you have a better chance at Disney World if it's working. Um, when it works, it's amazing, and it's worth every minute of waiting for it. It's, it's fantastic. But the problem is, um, is if everything's working or if it's, if it's running. Or if you can get a pass. Or if the animatronics are working. If the stars align. If the, the pre-show is working. I mean, the animatronics are breaking. The pre-show is breaking. The, That's at Walt Disney World, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just... what. Again, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. Right, so, I mean, my recommendation, honestly, is um, you've better shot Disney World, like he said. That's true. Yeah. Not everybody's getting it, but you have a better shot. Um, but I still would recommend waiting a bit because I think as it's been open longer, they'll work it out a little bit better. And the, you know, it won't probably be initiating the virtual queue. You actually, they're going to start probably doing the fast pass line eventually. Um, you have a better shot if you, you know, wait. Yeah. Or, you know, I, yeah, I would just, I would honestly wait six months or a year until they get all the bugs worked out, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, but who knows this ride might be, this ride might be problematic for its entire lifetime. It might be, uh, but just make sure if you're going, I recommend strongly if you're, if you want to go now and you want to try hover pass, I know yeah. it costs more, but it's the best thing you can do because if you get in there and you don't get a pass, you can go someplace else. If you get in there and you get a pass, but it's like number 100 and you're stuck there all day long, you can go someplace else. Heck, if you just have a single date, no matter what happens, no matter how long the lines are, and if you've rode everything 10 times, you're still stuck there all day to your, your 
your boarding group's called because yeah. you have a one day pass. So if this is why you're going, I recommend uh, the hoppers. It costs more, but you're going to thank me later. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.